thanks for the invite as well uh, to uh, give a brief talk here. Um, I am not as uh, close to uh, the 3D um, metaverse as I am uh, to the 2D one, but uh, you got to start somewhere. Uh, <laughs> in about a decade ago, I, uh, or well, actually, let me show you this picture. Do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, yeah, that was all well, that was I was doing. Um, I uh, uh, am uh, Rick Ahrens. I uh, um, have been doing web stuff for uh, pretty much 30 years. Um, and um, I'm, my, uh, my focus is on, on live coding and, uh, and uh, creation tools. Um, I co-founded uh, Cloud9 IDE and uh, we wrote the Ace code editor and that kind of stuff um, back in an earlier age. Um, so I have a lot of experience with HTML and browsers and, uh, that, and th those things. Um, but uh, my, uh, my spirit is with... Uh, um, live coding authoring tools. And um, this is a, a picture of uh, me in uh, around 2000, uh, live coding uh, an, um, a 3D environment with audio and that kind of stuff with a live coding uh, programming environment as well. So it's, it's been around for a while. Um, but uh, when I was doing Cloud9 IDE, um, because we had to build everything with HTML um, and, and essentially web technologies, uh, we also ran into the limitations very, very severely. And uh, back in the day, I also saw the future of AR, VR uh, uh, slowly um, appearing. And that meant that um, authoring content uh, in HTML, especially user interfaces, uh, didn't seem very appealing or performant. So I've spent about a decade uh, trying to reinvent the the render engine that uh, runs uh, in a in a browser or on the desktop, and um, this is uh, one of my uh, experiments. It's called uh, MakePad JS. And just to give you a quick idea of uh, the kind of stuff that I'm I'm focused on, here is a, a, a little example. Here's a piece of code. Uh, here's, for instance, the color. The color picker uh, shows up because it follows the cursor focus in this case. Uh, sure. And, and uh, as you uh, modify the color, uh, it uh, live changes the code and the, and the uh, running application updates. Um, just like uh, the picture of the old application you saw before in 2000, Except this is now running in a in a web browser uh, using a JavaScript and uh, multi-threading and those kinds of things. And this entire render stack, as you see it here, is uh, essentially a complete replacement of uh, HTML using WebGL. So there is not a single div in here. It has its own text render engine. It has its own um, uh, layout engine. Uh, pretty much everything, but then implemented in JavaScript. And uh, this is the sort of the, the final result of about uh, seven or eight years of trying to do this stuff in JavaScript, trying to make uh, a fast user interface uh, work in uh, JavaScript. And it, it came pretty close, I have to say. It, it's, uh, it's, it's not bad. It's, you know, it, it sort of works. But um, uh, as uh, one of my uh, game engine friends uh, uh, told me then, he's like, OK, you, you built an IDE, but uh, you're using about 100% CPU now to do all this stuff, and you have no time left to do anything useful. Um, so uh, I uh, then, um, as a WebAssembly became available, um, reinvented the entire stack in in Rust and in a web and uh, compiles to WebAssembly, which is uh, uh, this application that you see here. Um, and it, this allows you to do, let me see if I can make it a bit bigger. This allows you to do, uh, I don't know if anyone can see this, but this is uh, live code folding uh, happening at uh, 60 frames a second. And it's taking about a millisecond of CPU time in the browser to do this. Uh, so um, this actually is uh, performant enough to actually also put this UI in AR and VR. Uh, if you run this URL, makepad.nl, I think uh, I, I still have uh, the APIs that I did was uh, WebVR. This was uh, last year. Um, so you can uh, load this IDE up in WebVR and walk around it. 
I also made uh, 3D uh, uh, syntax highlighting. So uh, there, there's depth in the code uh, as you uh, as as the indentation uh, uh, grows, because this entire UI is just like uh, the UI we see here um, in uh, 3D with the text and with the the 3D um, uh, uh, characters. Um, Every single character, every single line, every single item in this in this UI is a is just triangles with a matrix, and uh, it renders uh, using a Z buffer. So you can do this whole thing in 3D without blinking. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so this is a um, sort of React uh, HTML everything reinvented uh, using Rust and uh, using a unified shader model. And uh, that's uh, what I wanted to show you a little bit about. So here's a, here's a Makepad running in a browser, and that's great. It takes about a millisecond of CPU time. But uh, what I normally use is uh, Makepad running on desktop. This is exactly the same code, just compiled to uh, a bare uh, metal in this case, the, the metal uh, graphics API. Um, and the Coco, it also compiles uh, natively to, uh, let me show you, Windows 10 and Linux. This exact same piece of code runs on web, Windows, Mac, and uh, Linux. And uh, uh, now also on, uh, on Web VR or Web XR. I still have to do the port to Web XR, but uh, um, it's, uh, it's going to be highly similar. I don't have any 3D examples in uh, in this application yet, so I will uh, stick to uh, um, to a 2D one. Um, so, in order to to make a new programming model for uh, for applications, so you can compare this very closely to something like Swift UI or um, or React uh, for web, except it's a, it's a reinvention based on. Uh, GPU shaders, um, just like uh, this application here. I can probably show you uh, something here. Uh, you see that this is JavaScript code, but actually it's compiled to a to a, a pixel shader. And uh, the same goes for uh, for this code. I'm going to uh, run the application. Uh, this is a, a simple Hello World application. It's very ugly, actually. I should make a better one. But um, the idea is that uh, you write shaders sort of integrated into the programming uh, language that you use to build the applications. Um, so here you define a shader and you define a variable. And, he, and, and this goes to run on the GPU, just like uh, you know a material in, uh, in Unity or Unreal. And uh, here, you can pass it data directly. And uh, right here, I'm uh, doing event handling that is uh, modifying this value. Um, so if you, if you polish away the boundary between the CPU and the GPU like this, um, you can create essentially anything like this code editor or um, uh, 3D worlds with uh, a particle systems or any kind of things that require a lot of uh, um, uh, data flowing from the CPU to the GPU. Um, so you, you can compare this a little bit to a, a new kind of way to do uh, SVG or a Canvas API, uh, except that the whole stack is programmable. Uh, here you see that uh, I write a little bit of pixel shader code to draw the circle. Um, and uh, so the, you, can, you can cut and paste uh, a shader toy in here, and then the circle will be that shader toy program. That's that's how uh, how it's integrated. Uh, we're currently working on uh, making the the this shader language completely GLSL compatible, so you can do that. But that's what we're doing. Um, this IDE is a complete live IDE, so everything I type uh, will be live compiled. So here you see uh, errors uh, showing as you type. This is this is sort of like a. Um, a replacement official studio code except that if you look at the actual uh, cpu usage of uh, of this application it's probably 10 times less and this whole thing uses maybe 64 megabytes of ram not gigabytes or something it's megabyte like we're sort of back to uh, 
2005 or something or earlier in terms of uh, how much uh, resource usage this is. Um, so yeah, so right now uh, this IDE is for 2D. We also have it compiling on the Quest uh, for, uh, or the beginnings of, the comp of it compiling on the Quest. So you can build native Quest apps or you can build WebXR apps. Um, and uh, right now we're in the progress of uh, taking this, uh, this, this IDE or design tool into uh, VR. And uh, uh, we're working on uh, timeline editors and you know uh, uh, visual design tools that can directly manipulate code with uh, with UI just like just like this, uh, just like this, uh, but uh, for different data types, so curves, you know, splines, shapes, that kind of that, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. Uh, I think I can uh, take some questions. Thanks, Rick. Um, I did have one question. Um, what do you think about um, standardizing this kind of stuff? Like, I realize that something like Rust probably doesn't have um, any standard bindings to like web stuff or like web GPU type things yet. Um, like, how do you feel about this kind of model working on some sort of more standard API? Um, something like WebXR, something like Web GPU, something like um, Houdini or. Well, I, it, it works on this kind of standard API. So um, let me see. I use uh, WebGL and I use, um, uh, I, I will use uh, WebXR. I now use WebVR. Um, so this is pretty much using the standard APIs in the browser, except that uh, um, this programming model, as it is in Rust, you know, this shader code. This shader code actually has four different compilers. One compiles to DirectX 11, one compiles to OpenGL desktop, one compiles to WebGL, and one compiles to Metal. And uh, if we get uh, WebGPU, then uh, one compiles to, uh, we'll have to make that one that compiles to uh, whatever the name of the thing is, Web, web you know, the, the WebGPU uh, 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 shader language. Yeah. So, um, I don't think we need to standardize anything yet in that sense. I'm happy to stand on web standards as they are. That makes sense. And that um, translation happens at what level? Is that just like some crates that you import or is that part of MakePad or? So MakePad is, uh, so this uh, program that you see, the IDE is uh, sort of like the root crate and it includes all of the render stack and all of the things as sub crates, as libraries. So the thing that uh, renders the UI or the thing that, uh, you know, you can use to, uh, um, hold on, make, uh, make this little example is a standalone render crate. And this render crate has support for four backends. So I can just compile a wasm blob. If you include one JavaScript file, that is sort of the, the bridge to uh, the wasm from, uh, from wasm to be able to send uh, WebGL commands. Uh, I can show you that actually. Um, then, uh, then you can just compile any kind of application on this API to uh, to web. So it's not it's not that integrated. They're really all separate crates. Here, WebGL. Here, there's like uh, there's like a two thousand lines of uh, JavaScript code in uh, integration. Uh, JavaScript uh, integration code. My scroll bar is not scrolling all the way to the left. Great. Anyway, um, so yeah, there's about 2,000 lines of JavaScript. And uh, what happens is the, um, essentially I, uh, I make a message protocol WebGL API available to Rust. And uh, it serializes all the draw calls out into a sort of like a little interpretable uh, typed array. And then the JavaScript just executes that. Got it. So this is all kind of like running into a worker, and then it's posting to the render thread. Uh, it's not. It's not even threaded. It's just a wasm blob that uh, and the JavaScript, uh, a piece of JavaScript code that uh, gets a typed array with all the draw call commands. Could it be threaded? That. I'm sorry. Could it be threaded? 
Yeah, we're uh, looking at uh, threading this for uh, for WebVR. So essentially, what we're doing is so this is sort of an IDE design tool in progress, right? Uh, like if I run this application, this is a separate window. It's not uh, it's not nicely integrated into the IDE. And if I do this in VR, I couldn't do this because this is a new render context from this one. In VR, mm -hmm. this one would have to sort of serialize its render calls into the render context of the IDE. So for uh, VR, we're uh, building uh, essentially something like, uh, 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 yeah, we're going to thread it. So this is going to run into it run in a worker and send its uh, uh, draw commands to the main thread uh, that is sort of also shared with the IDE, which you can then sort of see as its window manager if you want. It's amazing. Well, it looks very boring now, but I hope it'll look uh, much cooler, uh, you know, in the near future. But solving solving 2D UI in a way that didn't suck took me all of a decade. And uh, just this effect you see that you could do this uh, in a code editor at uh, one millisecond, at 60 frames a second, without any actual uh, logarithmic data structures. This code editor simply starts to paint from the top and paints all the way to the bottom and this whole uh, code folding is run on the layout engine so suck on that html you cannot do that so, but anyway then now we can go to vr finally because uh, all of this uh, just is uh, has a 3d matrix and uh, you can put it anywhere you want any more questions great thank you I'll 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 look at the chat in a bit. I I'm not looking at the chat. Hold on. Bridge to Discord. Do you do performance in VR? Like, can we see your work in VR? Will you do live coding? Uh, that's the idea. I don't have it uh, demoable right now because I need to make all this stuff where you, the user program runs in a worker and all that thing, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, the whole idea is that uh, the whole IDE is available in VR. You can live code in VR and it will live load your virtual reality application. And it will do it natively on the Quest completely. Uh, that's the idea. And it uh, will also uh, you do it uh, using WebXR. But uh, yeah, we'll see how far we can get with the uh, uh, actual hot loading of a user program and if it doesn't you know, trash your web browser because web browsers really suck if you do stuff like that to it. Um, but we'll see. But at least uh, we'll have it running native and the uh, web will, uh, we might have to uh, require the browser to get some fixes. But it doesn't work now. Now now all I have is uh, old web VR API and you can walk around the IDE. That's it. <laughs>